Well, for more on how Chinese companies are expanding overseas, I'm joined by Stephen Gu. Stephen is director of the U.S.-China Business Advisory Services at consulting firm PYA. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. So looking at Chinese companies that have successfully established a global presence, what are some of the lessons that can be learned? Well, uh, I have been involved with this kind of cross-border transactions, uh, particularly uh, helping the Chinese company expand to U.S. Uh, for almost a decade. And if you ask me the, this question five or six years ago, I'd probably tell you most of the daunting challenge will be the tech, uh, technical issues, such as you know, how to navigate the local regulatory tax financing system, et cetera. Uh, but I know after a few years, um, I, I realized that the, the, those technical issues are not a big deal for Chinese companies. They can eventually catch up you know, by hiring, hiring the right people and develop the right team or you know, hire the right consultants. And now I think the biggest challenge for the Chinese company is actually the cross, uh, is, is a cross cultural leadership and the communication issues. You know, uh, Chinese company and US companies, they, they, they start and they're growing at very different system. And uh, you know, although there's lots of commonality, but uh, not, not just speak a different language. You know, right. Although there's lots of commonalities, but you know, there are certain ways sometimes uh, are different. You know, uh, and those differences are actually very subtle and harder to notice. So this kind of issue is actually are very hard to tackle. And uh, you know, transforming into a truly international companies is uh, key for a successful overseas investment. And so, that is also the most difficult part to achieve. And because this, in, this implies lots of changes in lots of different perspectives. So Steve, uh, Stephen, let, let's break some of this down. Are there certain sectors where we tend to see the majority of China's companies really gravitating towards? I know that you mentioned tech, obviously, with Silicon Valley. What are some of the other spots that they're heading to? Well, I think it uh, depends on the sector. As a Silicon Valley, it's a, it's a hot place for startups, you know, for technology, uh, IT. But for bioscience, for example, they will go to probably Boston area, right, with MIT and lots of uh, bioscience companies. And uh, for fintech, probably they are heading to the south. And for healthcare technology or healthcare services, they're probably heading to also south or the east coast. So it really depends on the sector, depends on the clusters. Now, you have some companies like Alibaba who, who are now, for most people, a household name. But if you're not a household name, what can you do as a Chinese company trying to engage with new potential customers? Well, I think the, uh, doing a marketing campaign is very critical, uh, particularly for companies that not has a, like a very good brand yet. And so talk to us a bit about these marketing strategies. How much of a factor is that in the overall success when a company is trying to expand over, um, overseas? Well, I think a good marketing campaign is critical, particularly for companies involved in the consumer products. Uh, for example, uh, the DJI, uh, for a Shenzhen uh, drone manufacturer, right? And they, did, they have awesome products, and they did awesome marketing campaigns. So uh, they, they developed lots of fans, and uh, it became uh, one of the most popular uh, gift items during Christmas, uh, during Christmas time. So you know, lots of people don't even know it's, uh, it's a Chinese product. But you know they they just like it, uh, or maybe some people they know, but they don't care because it's just great products, and uh, they think it's pretty cool. Now, as you mentioned, that some people really don't know which products uh, come from China. So, how are these ongoing tensions between China and the U.S. when it comes to trade? How is that affecting the strategies for Chinese companies who want to enter the U.S. market? Well, Michelle, I think you probably already see the news. Um, I see the report. Uh, the the Chinese overseas investment you know, into U.S. Uh, including m and and including the uh, Greenfield investment has dropped 92% uh, during the, the first five months of this year compared to the last year. Uh, I think this is partially due to the tensions between the U.S.-China trade, right? And uh, I think, the, so the answer is very simple. Uh, if the trade war ever happened, there will be no winners. And there will be less investment, less trade, and eventually going to lead to less demand for all kinds of services. So you are talking about strategy. I think one of the strategy came for some Chinese company, if they have enough capability, they can consider you know, establish a company in other countries, including in the US, to, to make the products in the US. Um, I think you know, with, uh, with a lower tax rate, this can be uh, feasible. And speaking of other opportunities, what do you see as some opportunities that China's One Belt, One Road initiative could open up for Chinese companies, perhaps along that route? Of course, no, One Belt, One Road, we are uh, included so many different countries. And uh, 
they have lots of demands on lots of different products. So and without a tariff, I think uh, uh, they, I think there are lots of opportunities for the Chinese companies. All right, thank you so much. Stephen Gu there of PYA.